what's the accessibility screen? It's really the place where we go on the iPad to look at all the different types of accessibility features that are available. So it could be accessibility for people like ourselves who are visually impaired. It could be accessibility for other people who have hearing impairments or dexterity issues. So it really covers a diverse number of features. The accessibility screen can be accessed by going to the settings icon on your home screen and then clicking on general when you get to the uh, settings page. So let's do that. Photography settings. Duck. Settings. Okay, we're on settings. Now we're going to move to get to general. Air Wi-Fi. Notify locate brightness of picture for selected. General. Okay, general's already selected, but if it wasn't, we would just select it by double tapping or by clicking on it with our keyboard. Selected. General. Okay. So what that does is it changes the content that's visible or viewable in the center part of the screen. I'm just going to move focus there by touching it. Usage button. Okay. And then at the bottom of the screen, we have the accessibility option, which opens up the accessibility window. So I'm just going to move to that and click on it. Netflix, iTunes, wide, auto, past, iPad, automatically, restriction, use sites, lock, rotate, selected, multidisc, bullets, bullets, bullet pin, use four or five, date and top, keyboard, international, accessibility. Now, one thing I want to make mention of before I actually go into the accessibility window is, is that there is actually an accessibility window. Apple and these iProducts have really revolutionized how people with disabilities interact with technology. These accessibility settings are built in and easily accessed. So for those of us who are dealing with a disability that might not necessarily allow us to use products like this, Apple really has changed how we can interact with technology and it's pretty remarkable. So I'm just gonna open it and we'll see what different options are available for people who need some assistance with accessing it. Settings, vision, heading. Vision is the first heading. We're gonna look at... VoiceOver, on, button. VoiceOver is the first option here. And it tells us that VoiceOver is now on, as is obviously because it's talking, right? So if I click on this particular button, it will take me into the VoiceOver screen, which allows me to change or to customize how VoiceOver acts on my iPad. And we'll do that in a later video. The next option we have here zoom, off, is button. Zoom. Zoom is off. Zoom is a magnification software that's built into the iPad, which allows people who have low vision, but a lot of more usable vision than somebody like myself, to be able to magnify the images, to magnify the text that might be viewable on their iPad. Zoom is a, is a really nice feature for those of us who have enough usable vision and we still want to continue to use that. Okay, let's see what's next here. Large text, off, button. Okay, large text. This is off, this is what I was talking about. So you can set the text on the iPad in certain apps like contacts and mail and messages to appear larger if that helps you. You can use that in conjunction with voiceover, but it's not universal. So it's like, it'll affect specific apps or specific sections of the iPad, but not uh, necessarily the entire iPad like Zoom does. So for those of us who need just a little bit of magnification or, or just want to be able to see certain things a little differently, we can increase the text size in certain apps. And that's what this particular feature does. White on black, off. White on tap to toggle setting. <laughs> White on black is the next option here. And again, it's for those of us who need reverse contrast or who need a darker background with a lighter print or lighter text so that there's not as much glare. And you're able to switch this back and forth depending on the screen color of the app that you're using. That's what's going to impact how this particular feature works. So it's not like it'll universally set a black background with white print. It'll reverse the contrast of whatever the current contrast of the app that you're using is. So it works depending on how each user needs it to work. Speak selection, off, button. Speak selection. When you select text or select anything that's on the screen, do you want voiceover to speak it? So if it's highlighted on the screen, is voiceover going to speak it? Speak auto text, off. 
speak auto text. Auto text is when you're typing something and the iPad tries to predict what you want to type. So it tries to complete either the web address or the word for you. And do you want it to read that? Sometimes this could get really frustrating, especially when you're using voiceover and the iPad thinks you want to type something different than what you actually want to type. So it's reading something different than what you're intending. So it could get confusing hearing what voiceover is reading and knowing what you want to type in. So so I usually leave this off, but it depends again on your personal tastes. Automatically speak auto corrections and auto capitalizations. Heading. Automatically speak auto corrections and auto capitalizations. It's a setting of how we want voiceover to, to interact with certain pieces of text. Hearing. Heading. The next heading that we're looking at here is hearing. So this is for somebody who might be dealing with a hearing loss. And these are some features that are available for, for that community. Mono audio, off. Mono Double audio. Tap. You can reset the audio so that it's not coming out in stereo sound. Sometimes the quality of the sound makes a difference in how people are able to discern what's coming out from the device. Left, right stereo balance, 50%, adjustable. Okay. Swipe up or down to adjust the value. This is the balance of the sound that's coming out of the iPad, again, depending on the individual needs of the user. I'm not very familiar with the accessibility settings for people who are hard of hearing, but my assumption here is that this is going to be a way to balance out when the, the iPad is connected to headphones or to stereo speakers. Perhaps the user might be able to hear out of one ear better, so we want to concentrate all the sound coming out of a one particular headphone so that it can be best utilized by that user. Physical and motor. Heading. The next heading is physical and motor. This is for people who are having some dexterity issues. You may have noticed in some of the other videos that we've done, the iPad requires some level of dexterity, you know, sometimes using multiple fingers or even both hands to do something. So this allows people to customize how the iPad reacts to their touch. And the feature is called assistive touch off button. Great. It's called assistive touch. It allows people to customize how the iPad reacts to how they touch it. Triple click home, voiceover button. The last option on this page is called triple click home. It allows us to, to set what pressing the home key three times in rapid succession does. And in this case, it said triple click home voiceover button. That means voiceover is the option that's been selected. So if I press the home key three times, it will toggle voiceover on and off. And we'll be exploring this particular setting in a later video. In further detail. That's it. That's the accessibility screen and we're going to be exploring certain sections of this screen in more detail. Keep tuned.